we lose Latinos, we're gonna lose Spanish TV. <laughs> Spanish TV is the best thing on TV. You don't even got news in the morning, they dance first. <laughs> We can't sleep. Black people know what it's like to live next to y'all. <laughs> that was a clip of Tommy Davidson's hilarious stand-up where he once again shines with his unique brand of humor that bridges all ethnicities. The veteran actor and comedian is in town for several shows. I'm going to need to compose myself. <laughs> and the Houston Improv, he joins us in studio to chat about what has kept him going during his career, which spans more than four decades now, which is unheard of yes. uh, in the industry. I'll tell you the secret. What is it? These pants. Oh. <laughs> well. They are pants. very, very nice. Do they come in the same pants? That, the same pants that were just on this clip. I mean, these are the magic pants. I'm just kidding. They are beautiful. And congrats <laughs> on the special, all your success. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is true. I mean, having a career in show business is is Already is a needle tough. in the haystack. It's already yeah. tough. And yeah. one hit show in Living Color. But you have continued yeah. on. Do you think it's because of your versatility, Tommy? I think it's because of my love for it and my versatility. Yeah. You know, um, you sing, you act, I, you do stand up. If I'm not doing one thing, I could do the other. Right, right. You know, if I'm not doing a movie, uh, I can do animation. If I'm not doing animation, I can do stand up. You know, if I can't do stand up, I can write. If, if I'm not writing, I can sing. You know, there's always another thing to do. You planted a lot of And seeds. I love all of them, like my kids. I got a lot of kids, but I love them for each of their own reason. And so my career is just like that, too. See, everybody should have a career and be that lucky because you, if mm. you do what you love, you never work a day mm -hmm. in your life, right? Mm -hmm. No, it, it, like I read uh, Dr. Dwayne Dyer when I was 16, and he, he had this chapter on make your vocation your vacation. Mm. Oh. And I was like, that's interesting. He said, when you love some, something so much that it's not work anymore, mm -hmm. so they become the same thing. And that's pretty much what it is. Yeah, I'm well, so you are very mm -hmm. comfortable in all your different roles. It is so fun. That, just watching you on stage is so much fun, and that clip is hilarious. You have sort of an atypical upbringing, right? Mm -hmm. Because you were raised by a Caucasian family mm -hmm. on the East Coast in D.C. Yeah. You ended up moving to L.A. Can you tell us about your upbringing? Because mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. like that kind of exposure, I mean, right. for sure, informed your life. Right, right. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, in Texas, a Caucasian is white. Um, uh, <laughs> so, so, you were raised by white people. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Go ahead. Te te Texans are going to know that one. Caucasian? Come on, now I'm white now. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, that was, that was uh, just uh, the way I came into the world. You know, I was, a, I was abandoned in the trash as an infant. And my mother found me randomly right Probably at the point of death. Oh my you know? gosh. And so saw my foot under a, a, a pile of trash that she said, I think, I feel like I need to lift this tire up. And then my foot was there. It was that close. You are kidding. You know what I mean? She said, uh, I was unconscious. I had a t shirt on that said I would be president in 2 0 and it was ripped. Wow. You know, and um, I stayed in the hospital for 60, 60 days. I lived, I was starved, had contusions in my skull, like all. Oh. You know, anything that can happen to a kid. You know? Did. Mm -hmm. And um, I lived, you know, and grew up in Fort Collins, Colorado, and um, shut the front in door. In Wyoming. I lived in Greeley for a while. You see? Which is right next to Fort Collins. So, I mean, and uh, in, in, in 66, there was no black people there. So, I didn't even know about black and white. Mm hmm. Wow. Uh, until we moved to Washington, D.C. So, we moved to Washington, D.C. when I was five. And we got there during the riots. Oh. Of 68 when King got shot. Mm -hmm. Wow. So we're going, what the hell is going on here? Me and my sister are in the ground. There's fires everywhere. My sister looks like Cindy Brady. Note. And my brother looks like uh, David David Cassidy. Note. Mm. Google uh, Partridge Family <laughs> and, and, and the Brady Bunch. And, and so I don't know nothing. But I get there to the city and, and, and we we're there for a couple of days. We go to play with the other kids and they beat us up. Beat our asses so bad oh every, every day. Mm -hmm. And they were calling my brother and my sister white cracker and they were calling me white cracker lover mm. so this was happening so much i finally went to my mom and said why are they calling me a white cracker lover i like graham crackers just I'm five not even right. understanding i'm five right yeah and so she says um well that's what people your color call people our color when they don't like them and i said well what color uh are 
am I? She said, you're black. I said, no, I'm brown, like the crayons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That's what I was taught. She said, yeah, but that's what we call you. So that went on and got more and more dangerous. We uh, moved to the suburbs. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I heard the N-word. And this was more serious because grown men were chasing me home. That's terrible. Killed the knit. I mean, Are it was. You kidding? Yeah. I could be riding my bike and t truck would. Err, you know, I, I was like scared all the time. So I finally went to my mom's and I said, Who are these? We got to stay away from them because they must be really bad people. So she said, Well, that's what people our color call people your color when they don't like them. I said, Well, what color is that? She said, We're white. I said, No, you're beige. Right. Or, or peach sometimes. Sometimes the crayon would say flesh. I thought that was kind of weird. <laughs> but, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> even back as a kid, flesh. <laughs> what? You know, wait a minute. <laughs> you know. Um, so that was the moment for me that broke my heart as a little boy. Absolutely. Because I was like, well, how can this be my family that I love? And, and I'm supposed to hate them and they're supposed to hate me. And then everybody outside the door hates me because I'm me. You know, just because. Yeah. And 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 um, because I used to, because I thought, up to that point, that humans were like animals, because I grew up in uh, uh, Colorado mm -hmm. and I grew up in Wyoming on farms, you know, just like around animals all the time. Yeah. And I noticed with litters, it could be a a, 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 a red cat. Oh, of course. Right. Uh, yeah, that's that'll have two white kittens. Yep. A black one. Uh, a, a speckled gray one. So you thought, and they're all in the, the box. Way. And they're all in the box, uh, having a ball. Yeah. They're yeah. running around together. They're brothers and sisters. You mm -hmm. see, or or, yeah. or a horse it could be a brown horse and have a white cult. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. So I thought that we were like that. I thought whatever we were, I was a brown one. Yeah. Of the bunch. Yeah. 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 So that like really broke my heart. Yeah. Um, and so we moved to a, a integrated neighborhood. A year later, and this is the 70s, and things are changing. So, so they're mixed neighborhoods, but still. And um, the white teenagers chased me that time, and were like, "Kill the nit, right?" The black teenagers stood in front of me, and the white teenagers went that way. So I've been black since that day. Since wow. That day, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh, Tommy. You have an incredible story. Yeah. Hours. Okay. So yeah. That, that, that's the that's the start. Yeah. That's the start, yeah. and mm -hmm. then you turned all of that adversity mm -hmm. into yeah. an incredible career. We're mm -hmm. going to talk more about that, but in the meantime, yes. why don't we take a quick commercial break? Let's the one do and it. only comedian Tommy Davidson rejoins us right after this break. Don't go away. Welcome back to Houston Life. Many of us first got to know comedian Tommy Davidson when he starred on the hit TV show In Living Color. In Living Color. Uh, you walk on the moon, uh, float on the moon. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, well, sorry, sorry. <laughs> and since then, your career has just continued to thrive. Thank you so much for telling ah, us so man. much Thank about you. your background uh, you. before the break. So we've chatted about your upbringing and your career. I mean, once you got past all of these racial tensions mm -hmm. that you experienced mm -hmm. growing up, at what point did you realize that you had this incredible gift? and all this other stuff. Never thought too much about it. But as I grew up, I was, I was funny, you know? Mm -hmm. But I wasn't thinking about comedy. I had got a job at a Ramada Inn when I was 13, because my mom threw me out of the house because I was trying to be a little criminal out in the streets. Oh, man. And, and she said, you can't get back in the house until you get a job. So I went and cheated on my job application, got a job at IHOP, right? Mm -hmm. And that was my gig, was to keep a job around me. So finally, I went to a friend of mine. I called him. I got a really good job. I was uh, 17, almost 18. I got a job as an assistant chef at a Ramada Inn. All right, that's how long I worked. And I went to my friend and I said, man, I got this job. And da -da -da. he said, man, you're the stupidest person I ever met in my life. You should be a stand-up, an uh, actor, a singer. You could be your whole you life. You got the change. gift. You got the gift. And I yeah. was like, man, get out of here. I'm just mad because you ain't got no job, man. And he set me up. This is true. I got to tell the truth. He set me up with this, the worst strip club <laughs> in the world that he worked at and talked them into letting me come on stage. Undo stand-up. Yeah. Okay. And so I'm like, I ain't going down there. And he pressed it and pressed it and pressed it and pressed it. Finally, I went down there. The, the, the manager comes out. <laughs> you know, is that him? Yeah. yeah, good. You got five minutes. Something out of a movie. So I, I look at Howard and I go, well, what do you want me to do? He said, I don't care what you do. 
just say something on the mic. <laughs> and I went over, the first thing I said, they laughed. Oh. Second thing, it was already there. It was already there. It's like, it's like I played violin already. I just, mm -hmm. it just was natural. I stayed there for three months before the whole city was chasing me to do shows mm -hmm. and, wow. you know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't even go to a comedy club for, if, uh, for the first year. I finally went to a comedy club and guess who I meet the first day? Who? Martin and, Martin and um, Dave Chappelle. We all started at the same time. You're mm -hmm. kidding. It's a year I'm out in yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. Three years later, Living Color, movies, the whole, so that's how it came about. But how it really came about is this. Howard grew up with me in my neighborhood. He was one of the poorest kids I ever met, right? And I'm talking about a rough household. His mom used to beat his, I mean, his dad used to beat his mom. I mean, it's the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. But my mother used to like to have him come over to Christmas at the house. You know, so he'd open his presents with us. She loved Howard. So one Christmas he comes over, he's got a paper bag and a bow on it, that's his present. And he opens it, it's an orange, and like three of those little black, um, those little green army men. Mm -hmm. And that's his Christmas present. My mother says, oh. give me your watch, one of your watches. I said, why? She said, because you got two. Oh. I gave it to him, and what a gift. Look at the gift. Yeah. Absolutely. She was teaching me. Absolutely. Hey, the universal law of exchange. You give, mm -hmm. you get. An incredible story. Uh, Tommy Davidson, we got to leave it right there. He is performing at the Houston Improv starting tomorrow, Friday, May 19th through Sunday, May 21st. And this event is for ages 18 and up. For tickets and more info, visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. Click on the Scene on Houston Life section. Go see him, Tommy Davidson. Thanks so much. We'll be right back.